Mm -hmm. Just give me your view uh, as you look at these massive declines. I think overall, when you're looking at these companies, the pressure that you're having from supply chain constraints, bringing, working to bring in goods through air freight is definitely pressuring the earnings picture, especially when you have consumer demand. It's a different story for Gap and for Nordstrom. For Nordstrom, they've been having issues with the rack business for a while. There's work to be done on optimizing inventory and balancing the price points. At Gap, this is a surprise. And frankly, the expense pressure coming from the investment in supply chain, I think, is what drove some of the weakness. But let me but whatever, a, oh, go on. a couple of things. I mean, Nordstrom, they don't seem to be having any supply chain issues whatsoever. Their inventories were, were up. Uh, and they're up too much. Yeah, the, the issue with Nordstrom is the urban areas are more pressured than the suburban areas. And we've been having pressure from Nordstrom for the past couple quarters or years. It's been shoppy at Nordstrom, and there's work to do to enhance the assortment and manage the cost equation. Their operating margins are basically the only ones at Nordstrom who aren't increasing over 2019 levels. So how do you explain what happened with Macy's, which had a really good quarter and, it was, and was well received by the market? It, it's not like they're all, I mean, they all should be dealing with these issues sort of equally, shouldn't they? They should. And I think there's differences in each of them. I think when one of the things you're seeing at Macy's, you take a look at that $8 billion plus digital business and the contribution margins from digital, it worked. The other thing that was so interesting about Macy's, they brought in goods early. It seemed like they planned smartly in order to be able to deliver holiday 2021. So what do you make of the gap guidance? That, that really was a blow and I think a surprise to investors. They lowered on, on supply chain. They, they used the word transitory, I think, three or four times in the release to highlight mm -hmm. that the business momentum is strong. So, so is this one a buy off, so I, off the results if it's just supply chain? I prefer Gap over Nordstrom. I think there are others out there like the weakness in Abercrombie today, which I think that's an opportunity also. And I look at companies where they're also increasing their share of buybacks. That definitely helps and shows you a confidence of strength going forward. Abercrombie's got that. I mean, Dana, I'm looking at, you know, as I mentioned, you do have a hold on Gap. Your price target is 33 can we show the stock again? Because I think I just saw it at 19. I mean, what, what's an investor supposed to do in that scenario where you really don't love the stock, but your price target is much higher than where it sits today? Well, keep in mind that uh, as we adjust earnings, the price target will adjust. I think the balance sheet's still solid. And the word transitory, I think one of the headwinds of retail lately is that we don't have 22 guidance. And 2022 will show a framework. I think for Gap, you still have a very strong balance sheet. The old Navy business with body quality and what they're doing and Athleta will reach nearly 70% of sales. Is it a, it, can it have upward momentum from where it is? The reset of 2022 is going to show a valuation that could be more compelling than what you have at Nordstrom. It's crazy, the divergence. Some of these retail stocks flat for the year. Bath & Body Works is up 150%. I mean, right. It's all over the map. Dana, Chelsea, thank you map. for joining us. Thank yeah. you.